There is a place, not here or there, but somewhere in between. There is a space in the thin air that really can be seen. If you listen and observe, you may be surprised. Some may call it Camelot, or even Paradise. Some may say you cross a bridge, others through a door. But all I know about this place is that I call it Evermore. Evermore. Good evening, sweet spirits. Welcome to the show. My name is Suzanne Sorrell, and I'm the host of the Evermore Paranormal Network. On this episode, we have the paranormal man himself, Mike Stevenson. So please welcome him to the show. Thank you very much, Susanna. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It really is. Well, thank you so much for coming, especially coming all the way from Maryland. <laughs> you know, it is, a, it is a little ways to come. Right. So do you, I always ask people that I know, mm -hmm. uh, how, do you remember how we met? I believe it was um, at, uh, what was it? Um, Parafest? Parafest. I couldn't get the word I out. I know. Do you, it, 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 it was, what, 2013, I believe, yeah. wasn't it? Bethlehem. Yeah, and it's funny because we didn't know each other. I no. wasn't in the feet. Well, I was a vendor. Right. Were you a vendor at that event? Uh, yes, or I was. Speaker. Yes, I was. And we we met at the hotel. Yes. And so we were just like, really didn't know right. what e anything but about each we other. We kind of clicked together with you know right. in our conversations. Right. So where did you? Where were you born? Where did you grow up? Were well, I I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. And a lot of people say, no, that's impossible, because you could say Baltimore. <laughs> but uh, I did in Highland Town, if, if those viewers know where Highland Town is. And I haven't really moved that far away either. Um, it, I'm in, let's say, let's say the sister uh, area of it, which is known as Canton. Mm -hmm. So it's right next to the more famous Fells Point. Oh, yes, I've heard of that. Yeah. Probably because my friend Gina. Mm -hmm. Gina sings around that right. area, Gina DeLuca. And it's a very haunted area, too. Is it really? Yes. We've got to get, get up there and investigate. Yes. So, I've known you, but I don't know, like, are you married, single, got I'm kids? I'm single. Um, single? I'm single. Single and looking or no? You're just like, well, done. Well, you know, it's funny. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bad finder. So uh, I'd rather a good woman find me. <laughs> okay. I, I can't pick them very well. <laughs> well, I, I already told you that I already have a couple people in mind All for right. you. So we'll have to kind of <laughs> fix you up on a ghost there hunt or something. There we go. So um, do you have any grandchildren? Yes. Or kids? I do have a, a three-year-old grand. Well, next month she'll be three. Uh-huh. Which is adorable. Wow. Yeah. So I see. I was looking at your website, mm -hmm. and I, as I told you already, very impressed. Thank you. With your website, your credentials, your professionalism, all that. Thank you so much. So you have um, a bachelor's degree. Yes. In in science. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Right there, that's such a, a plus in this mm -hmm. field, in the oh, paranormal definitely. field. And then you went on to get a master's. Yes, in informational systems. Now that obviously, I, you use that for your web. I mean. That info, your knowledge, help you with the website? It that, does. That it helps you with that and also helps with a lot of other things, uh, particularly in using the equipment we use in the field. Exactly. Exactly. And so you, most people, like I, I mentioned on other episodes, most, most people have a day job mm -hmm. when they're in the paranormal field. Right. What is or was your career? Well, I am still working. Yeah. And, uh, I actually work for Baltimore City Government. Mm -hmm. And... It's a two-part job. Monday through Friday, let's say, uh, I work on the communication systems that interlink all the traffic lights in, in Baltimore City. Wow. And okay. on weekends, every other weekend, the other job is I get in a cherry picker and actually go out and repair those traffic lights when oh. they malfunction. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, as for, I know you're a busy man, but do you have any hobbies that are not paranormal related? Do you, wow. do you have time for anything? <laughs> I don't really have much you time don't? for much of a hobby. 
I no? mean, I used to like going to the ocean and getting in the water and stuff like that, if that could be ever called a hobby, but uh, I've, I have so little time for yeah. so much I do. Obviously, and I same here. I don't mm -hmm. really. I have hobbies when I have a little bit of time to do them. Right. Like roller skating is what I do. Yep. So we're we're gonna take a quick break. Sure. Okay. And we will be right back to talk about ghost hunting with Mike Stevenson, theparanormalman.com. Mm -hmm. My journey skating for the gold taught me a lot, but my journey with breast cancer has been one of my greatest teachers. Every woman's breast cancer is unique. Be Wiser educates and empowers women to take control of their breast cancer treatment plan and help navigate their own path beyond five years. Talk to your doctor about information and tests to personalize a treatment plan that fits your needs. I did. Be informed. Be wiser. Support survivors like us. So we're back with the paranormal man, Mike Stevenson. And I want to ask you, how long have you been studying in the field? Well, pretty much most of my life, really. Yeah. Um, it, it had a like, slow start, so to speak, because back when I was like first getting my first experiences with this field, mm -hmm. it wasn't something you talked about. Right, exactly. And I, I even had problems within my own family, them, you know, it's like, ooh, don't talk about that, exactly. you know. And you know, like my mother always said, you're imagining things or you're daydreaming. You know, you don't daydream mm -hmm. stuff like yeah. happens. <laughs> so like, so how did you get involved and or, and or why did you get involved in the paranormal field? Well, back when I was very young, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, I'm going to say eight year old. And that's, that's a different, a, a truly unusual number because mm -hmm. a lot of people I know of, for some reason, the eight to 12 time frame is when most people actually have an encounter of some type. And it, it, it's really, I think it's fascinating that it works out that way, really. Me too, same, same, first and first ghost and first like where I almost drowned. Right. And that incident sure. was eight and like 14. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, so you, ha you have a team, how does that work? I know you, you call it an organization. It is You don't really consider it a team? Well, when we get together to do a particular investigation, and there's people really all over around the tri-state tri area mm -hmm. that do come together as a team. The Paranormal Man organization is basically a virtual organization, and there are people who are not actually members but do contribute information. If someone has a question, why something, why something went bump in the night, we'll try and answer it. And we'll mm -hmm. also collect data from even anywhere in the world if they want to participate and use that to put together scientifically to analyze that situation, analyze that problem, mm -hmm. to find out what made it go bump in the night. Right, so that's nice that you, you help just to anybody that wants help. Exactly, anybody, anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I always ask about, and I, like I said in a previous interview, mm -hmm. always ask people in the paranormal if they're a believer or a skeptic, because you'd be surprised. Definitely how many a believer, are believe skeptics. me, yes. You're a believer. Yeah, definitely. Because of things that you've experienced? Experiences that happened and the way they happened and the fact that I can really connect a lot of it together, it, it proves itself as it goes. Mm -hmm. It truly does. So, do you have a favorite thing about ghost hunting or the paranormal field? Really, the, the thing that I treasure the most is the ability to teach others things I know. Mm -hmm. And when they learn something I'm teaching and they apply that and it works for them, to me that's like the greatest reward. So you are like a natural teacher. Yes. I can tell that. Yes. And like I said, I want you to come back and mm -hmm. teach our audience. I'd love to. Whatever you want to talk about that's paranormal related. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to stick with that. Oh, of course. But even if we use the other, the cooking set, we can cook something, you we know? Cook up a few ghost meals. Yeah. I think that'd be fun. <laughs> it would. And is there any, what is your least favorite thing about the field, about the field or ghost hunting? Do you have a... Something that just there's not pet really peeves, maybe? a you know a problem or something that mm -hmm. irks me that, that there is none really. Mm -hmm. um, 
except I'm going to say running out of time to get it all done. Yeah. You know, like what we're doing right now, trying exactly. to get it done. Before. And you know, the, the most unfortunate thing is there's a lot of TV shows out there, and I know we're on TV, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of TV shows out there that glorify the investigation, and then you, they'll come back from a commercial, and you'll see a guy sitting in front of a laptop, and he listens to it for two minutes, and he's got all this information. That's not nowhere near accurate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's There's like, so much work that goes into the analyzing of all the information. Exactly. And especially when there, there, there's no guarantee that you get anything. Exactly. You can sit there all weekend and not get anything. Right. I often tell people, I said, look, to, to best describe doing an investigation, it's like bass fishing. Mm -hmm. If you ever watched a bass fishing show, the guys are sitting there talking to each other all mm -hmm. night and they may get one nibble. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty much how, unless you're going into a place that's extremely haunted, possessed, or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you'll, you'll get almost nothing most of the time. Yeah, really. It is true. Mm -hmm. But if you get that amazing piece of evidence, oh, yes. it's like the holy grail, as Exactly, say. exactly. So, I was reading your website, and you had said that you your earliest um, experience was a 19, well, I don't know if we went, it's on the website. 1962, you yes. and you said it was a paranormal encounter of the third kind. Yes, but it was. Since we've been talking, though, you said you had, I'd like to hear about that story, mm -hmm. but I want to also hear about your, the story that was before that. There was one before that when I was eight years old, and if you can do the math, yeah, I'm an old geezer. Uh, I was born in, well, I won't go into that. We'll leave that out, but I'll say that this incident happened in 1958, Okay. and it was rather strange. Uh, I went to Catholic school as a child, and of course that meant I had to wear a uniform. So mm -hmm. here I am, eight years old, I'm coming home from school, and my bedroom was on the second floor of the house. So I'm running up the steps and hurrying up and changing my clothes. Um, you know, like Superman goes in the phone booth, well, I had to go to my bedroom, hurry up and change. Because mm -hmm. my friends were all waiting outside, because most of my friends went to a regular school and they, of course, were right there to play. As soon as they got home, mm -hmm. I had to change out of my school clothes. So I hurried up, ran up to my room, changed my clothes, and I'm sort of got running downstairs. Now, the, uh, where the staircase was in, in the old house my parents and I lived in, there was a linoleum on the floor, and at the top of the stairs was this metal strip to hold the linoleum down, so uh, I think it's called a, um, a kick bar or something, so you don't rip up the linoleum by constantly, you know, coming up top. Oh, well, yeah. it was loose, mm -hmm. so it, it, you know, it, 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 it rattled a little bit. In getting ready to come downstairs, I turned and I'm in a hurry. I'm rushing. I wasn't careful. I'm eight years old. What kid eight year old is careful? And I tripped over the loose metal bar, mm -hmm. and it caused me to fall forward. And this is a, these steps were rather high steps. Mm -hmm. And it was like 15 steps up and there was a little, little landing and then three more steps down. So it was, it was a pretty good incline. Here I am falling forward like Superman coming in for a landing. Mm -hmm. As I fell forward, my feet are off the ground. I'm falling forward down the stairs. I get to about the halfway point down the steps. This is a flight of stairs that yes. you're flying. Okay. I'm flying down this flight of stairs, head first. Oh my goodness. Could have been. It could have been very disastrous. Could have been, yes. But the weird thing that happened was, let's say if you were filming this mm -hmm. and you slowed the film down and then ran it backwards, that's what happened to me. Wow. I literally slowed down in midair. Oh, I got chills. And I was only a, like a foot or two off the, the steps. And mm -hmm. I came to a complete abrupt stop. And I did actually feel something around my gut. There was pressure there, like something was holding me. Something saved you. It, it did, and it, like if it was run, running a film backwards, held me and pulled me back up to the top of the stairs and sat me down. No way. Yes. It did that too. It okay, did that. it didn't just stop you from like it carried hurting me up yourself the steps dramatically. And sat me down on top of the stairs. Oh, well, there you go. That's a, I'd be a believer right then and there. <laughs> Definitely. That, that's an amazing story. And I, I get chills when you're telling me the story. Yes. And uh, I love hearing people's stories mm -hmm. because it just, 
I'm a believer and I'm hearing these stories and going, right. wow, amazing. Yeah. So we have about a minute. Mm -hmm. You want to tell us about this? And we can always go into the next segment sure. with this. But mm -hmm. that other uh, a paranormal encounter of the third kind a few years right. later? Right. Um, it kind of adds to the first story because when I ran and told my mother, Mom, I was just carried in midair. You, you were dreaming. How could I be dreaming? I'm wide awake, you know. Yeah. Well, I went next door where my grandmother lived, and I explained to her what was going on. Um, she's an old Polish German. I'll call her a gypsy just because she was a, she was a good card reader. So mm -hmm. I told her what happened, and she said, that was probably your Uncle John. He don't like seeing children get hurt. No. So whether that's true or not, I never knew, mm -hmm. but it was a good, at least it was an answer. Yeah. You know, and it showed that she at least believed in what I said. Now, I say that because I'm getting into the, the other story you're interested in. Yeah, well, let, let's take a quick break then. All righty. And uh, we'll come back so we don't have to interrupt you. Sure. So we'll be right back to hear about this other story, this amazing story from The Paranormal Man. Losing weight's a lot harder than gaining it, but with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes every step very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. So we're back with the paranormal man, Mike Stevenson, and he was in the middle of a story about a paranormal encounter of the third kind that happened in 1962. So yes. we're gonna, I want to hear this. Oh, yes. Well, as it started out, when I was 12, my parents moved to a new home, and the home was surrounded upon some wooded area. It was an old farm that they made into a housing development. Well, I always went to the local rec center, which was about a block away. Mm -hmm. And walking home, I had to come home. When it, as soon as it got dark, street lights come on, you had to come home. That was the deal. So I'm coming home, and I'm passing this open field, but while doing so, I had this uncanny feeling that somebody was watching me. And it kind of bothered me. I kept looking over my shoulder, didn't hear footsteps, didn't see no one, didn't know what it was, but it, it just, it sat with me. And maybe it even scared me a little bit because I was only 12 years old, I didn't understand it. So naturally I went to the person to whom I could confide in with this type of situation, which was my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And I told her that many, many times I'm walking home from the park and I have this feeling something is following me. And she says, if you had that, that strong a feeling, obviously someone was watching you. But if it's bothering you, you need to tell them to stop it because it's bothering you. Mm -hmm. And if it's something they want to do, like an encounter with you, tell them to either come forward or leave you alone. Mm, okay. So the, the last time it occurred like that, I turned around and I said, look, whoever you are, you're bothering me. I don't like this unknown. I want to know what's going on. If you want to talk to me or something, come forward or else leave me alone. Now, it's what happened that night that really made uh -oh. things go. <laughs> Uh-oh, what happened? Well... I get ready for bed, I'm in bed, uh, getting ready to go to sleep, but not there yet, you know, I'm just like sitting in bed. And I start having that feeling that I had outside the house in the adjacent field to the, to the street mm -hmm. from home. And I went, wait a minute now, here I am at home, in bed, my own bedroom, and I got this feeling. So I look around the room, there was no lights on, but there was a light on in the hallway just outside my bedroom. My parents always had us leave our bedroom doors open so they could, you know, look in on us and what have you. So I'm looking around and I got this feeling. I said, all right, now either tell me what you want or leave me alone. Well, just then there was two orbs mm -hmm. that kind of came through the wall and stopped in the middle of my room. Wow. And I'm, of course, looking at this. This is my first experience with an orb, mm -hmm. but it was it was a ball of light. It I've experienced that too. Exactly. Yes, it was a it gave off all its own light. They were just there. Now, 
You've probably seen the show The Outer Limits. Yeah, it's been a while, okay, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. telling my age here. Oh, yeah. But they, they started the show out with, they're using an oscilloscope, which is like a TV screen for electronics. Mm -hmm. And they have like a dot, and the dot expands this way and that way. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happened to the, both of these orbs. Wow. They suddenly flattened out into a line and then grew to seven to eight feet tall. Mm. And there was two translucent beings standing in front of me. Wow. That's, ama that's amazing. It, it is. And, and I believe every ounce of your story, too. Right. They, they didn't speak as in speak. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a mouth, but it didn't move. They had holes where ears should be, but they didn't really have ears. Mm -hmm. There was a nose there and their eyes. Their eyes were like big red. Wow. Yeah. Um, a little scary, mm. you know, but I'm okay that they at least showed up. Now, this part gets weird. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there on the side of my bed looking at these two. They turn to each other and they start talking. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing was they were speaking some kind of foreign language. Don't know what kind. Wow. But what's really unusual is as they were speaking, like if you or I learned a second language, but it wasn't our born language, mm -hmm. You know it, but you don't know it that well. So you like translate it in your head as to what's being said in the, the they mm -hmm. call it the second language. This is what was happening with me. Mm -hmm. They were talking to each other and I'm hearing them. And a second or so after they speak, I'm able to interpret the words into English, what they're talking about. Of course, they were talking about me. Oh yeah, well, they're in your room. Right, they they're in my room, be. they're talking about me. <laughs> and wow. you know, I'm, I'm looking at them, I'm going, the what do you want? You had, the, you had the nerve to ask him? I had the nerve to ask him. It's because my, my grandmother gave me that confidence. Oh, yeah. You know? And the, the, the shorter one, there was one about seven feet taller, so one maybe six and a half feet, mm -hmm. and a little thinner, if you could even see shape, but it was, they were like translucent. You know, you could see through them, but oh, not yeah. very well. They looked at me and then looked back and continued to kind of their conversation. Mm -hmm. And I go, what do you want? What do you, what do you really want of me? And the shorter one said, in their language, of course, mm -hmm. I think he can hear us. Wow. And the other one said, no, that's impossible. And it, it was so new because here they're speaking a language I don't know per se, yeah. but I seem to know it. And they're actually speaking telepathically. Mm -hmm. But yet I'm hearing them. Yeah. And then the, the shorter one again says, I know he can hear us. And I said, yes, I can hear you. What do you want? And they pointed at me. I said, oh, you want me? And I got up off the bed. <laughs> I was just gonna go with them. Oh goodness! Yeah. So it wasn't like an abduction. It was more like a follow me, and I, I, I I'm, where, I'm here. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go. My mother started coming up the stairs, set, to, to, I guess, to check on me, and I could see it was her. I had seen her head bobbing, um, you know, to, from the floor because my dresser was near the doorway on the opposite side, mm -hmm. so I could see her reflection at an angle. Yeah. They turned and seen her coming up the steps, and they seemed to panic almost. Mm -hmm. They returned to the little thin line, then into the orb and shot out through the wall. Now I never actually seen them again. Yeah, but that's that's a uh, <laughs> that's a profound story, definitely. Definitely, definitely. And scary, yep. and a first experience, <laughs> all in one. All in one. And so I really enjoyed that story mm -hmm. that we definitely are running out of time. We just got a couple minutes now. Mm -hmm. So we definitely got to have you come back. Oh, definitely. Anytime will. you want to. Yes. Um, so I think, you know, when you were telling the story, I just got to say real quick because we right. only got a couple minutes is one, the story about the, my husband mm -hmm. has been on the show and right. he had his first paranormal experience was a, a, a possible UFO sighting in a right. field at, I think, 12 years old. Right. There you go. Right. Secondly, when you were saying how you could, um, you could hear them, right. and they realized that and yes. said, "I think you, 
I have heard spirits mm -hmm. and they go, she, she, you're not, they've actually said, you're not supposed to hear us. Right. You're not supposed to see us. Right. I've actually caught mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. So w that, and I mean, I could relate to the story. Yes. So, oh, the other thing was about the orbs mm -hmm. that turned into something. Right. Um, my mom, um, without getting into detail, my, mm -hmm. Jim and I were, uh, in the master bedroom and I was talking about my mom and he and the lights on just talking about her right. after she died, maybe a month or so after she died. Mm -hmm. I see a huge um, orb, right. three dimensional right. ball right. of light shoot across from the one end of the yeah, room. Yeah, and it's like got his own glow. Yeah, and it was like the size of a grapefruit mm -hmm. or, um, yes. and yeah. it was three dimensional. Yes. And so I've seen those. So mm -hmm. people that dismiss orbs right away, I go, you, and when you see them, you'll realize you can't just dismiss everything right, and, right. and orbs and so on. Um, well, we have totally run out of time. We're oh going to have to have you come back to yes. talk about uh, Ramblewood House. Definitely. That's and a story in itself. Yes, definitely come back. We'll do a whole show about Ramble, Ramblewood I'd House. I'd love to come back and discuss it with and you. And come, we want to come to the site as well, definitely, like we've been talking about. Definitely. So thank you for coming. Yes. And we're going to have to wrap this episode. I up. know. It, so. it, I don't know where the time went. Uh, yeah, I was just enthralled with the story, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So, thank you for watching the Evermore Paranormal Network. I hope you enjoyed the show and learned some things. Until next time, peace out. So, in the end, what have I said? <laughs>